I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last Bottle Wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out, and they're always at incredible prices. We're talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Dateable listeners 10% off your first order with code Dateable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So So what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code DATEABLE and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. This episode is made possible by Badlands Pets. As you all know, Mojo, my precious baby, is the reason why I found love in the first place. He made me feel love again. So I would do anything to ensure his health and longevity. And actress Katherine Heigl and I have that in common. She's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to to improve any dog's health, and that's their food. So fortunately, she found that just by adding a few special superfoods to her dog's food, she saw huge transformations in their health. So she's made a 20-minute video explaining step-by-step how anyone can do the same thing to see incredible changes in their dog's health. I've definitely re-looked at what I'm feeding Mojo and making sure that hey, he only has one life to live and I want to make sure it's the best damn life. So if you want to keep your dog healthy and happy, go to badlandsfood.com slash dateable and watch Catherine's video right now. Again, that's B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S-F-O-O-D.com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. The Dateable podcast features real stories from real people of how they make modern dating work or not. I'm your host, Yue, former dating coach turned dating insider, if you will. On each episode, you'll hear commentary from my producer, Julie Kraftchik, and other surprise co-hosts. This episode of Dateable is brought to you by 500 Brunches. 500 Brunches connects like-minded people with similar interests to meet in real life over brunch. You answer a quick questionnaire about your interests and how you spend your time, and then they'll match you in small groups of six to eight at a brunch spot in San Francisco. Get a free entry into a brunch now by signing up at 500brunches.com and using the code DATEABLE. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating. You know how these days it's like cool to be a unicorn? You see like unicorn merchandising everywhere. It's like unicorn farts, unicorn glitter, unicorn headbands What's everywhere. a unicorn fart? Uh, it's like sparkly ice cream. Oh. And they call it a unicorn fart. <laughs> <laughs> you never see that? <laughs> All right. Only I've had unicorn farts. But today we have two live unicorns. We've got Charlotte and Ellis. Do you guys want to make some unicorn noises so people know what Is unicorns- that just farting noises? <laughs> <laughs> if you're wondering what we're talking about, I'm going to give you a definition of what a unicorn is according to Urban Dictionary because, you know, that's a go-to source for all things. It's actually a derogatory term. Uh, a, bi- a unicorn is a bisexual person, usually though not always female, who is willing to join an existing couple, often with the presumption that th- this person will date and become sexually involved with both members of that couple and not demand anything or do anything which might cause problems or inconvenience to that couple. Sometimes a unicorn is expected to not develop any emotional attachment and is strictly there for a sexual relationship. And then on the flip side, we have a unicorn hunter. Another derogatory term refers to someone who's seeking that special third to complete their family. They often believe a bisexual third partner will prevent jealous feelings. Okay, I see both of you looking like, "Mm, I have a lot to say about those definitions, those terms, 
But before we talk about what Urban Dictionary says about unicorns, I want to talk to you both about what you're experiencing currently. So let me introduce Ellis first. He's 27. He's from San Francisco. Yeah. The, you are a unicorn. In that way. <laughs> from, born and raised in San Francisco and still lives, lives in San Francisco. He's currently seeing a married couple and it's been a year. About that, yeah. That about a year. About okay. And then we have Charlotte. She's 22. She's from St. Louis. Been in San Francisco for four years in a monogamous relationship, but also has developed a friendship and a relationship with a married couple for several years now. Yes. Okay. Is that still going on or is that ending? We're still friends, but I am in a monogamous okay. relationship right now. So that it's just friends. Got it. <laughs> okay. Let's go from present to past. Ellis, talk to us about your current relationship with this married couple. I am their pet cat. <laughs> <laughs> I think would be the best way to describe it. Um, I mean, their their default as people, generally speaking, is just to be kind and reach out to people and want want to connect with people. And um, the these days, like I, I'm I'm kind of an indoor outdoor cat. Like I can come and go, and uh, you know I I'll be arriving unannounced at their place after this and like you know they've got a guest room and sometimes like i crash there and sometimes do you have keys to their apartment yeah oh. uh and uh, sometimes i i sleep in the bed with them uh honestly like we we occasionally have sex but like i'd say most of the time that we spend with each other is just spending time with each other and hanging out and like I really love them and they're really smart people and they're on the same wavelength as me in a lot of different ways. How did you meet them? <laughs> uh, we actually met all in the same hour uh, three or four years ago now at a play party. It was this really hot blonde chick having sex next to me and I was having sex with a friend in front of me and I said, hey, want to trade? And we all kind of looked at each other and made sure everybody was consenting to that and then then we did. And that, that's how I, I met the wife. I met, met the husband later that night. And... I think it'd be good for our listeners to know we have have interviewed Ellis before from a play party that we did an episode on. So yeah. if you want to hear his voice and his penis speak, you can listen to that episode. So you met them at the play party and then... Right, right. It, it was a while later that I would say that we like started dating. And after... I, I say we started dating about a year ago because I had just trashed my motorcycle and my left leg was all busted up. And I lived at that time like a block away from them. And they said, well, you know... If you ever need a place to stay, like, you, you can always come and stay with us. Which, like, I had a place to stay. That was not a problem in my life. But, mm -hmm. like, they kind of, I, I was at an emotional lower low in my life at that point, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they saw that a friend of theirs was hurting and, like, and that, so they took you in. They did. They did. They totally did. Like a stray cat. Like a stray cat. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I... I've been spending time regularly with them ever since then. They, Are you their first unicorn or have they gone through this before? I don't think they've ever like seen somebody regularly like me before. Okay. okay. And do you have relationships with both of them? I would say that like I, I see them as a couple in a unit. But, like, okay. I, I say I'm their pet cat, like kind of tongue in cheek, but it doesn't do a terrible job of describing the way that I I come into that relationship and that like they're they're married and they want to be together and I always want to be an important part of their lives but like the relationship that they have with each other is very different from the relationship that they have with me and a lot of the way that I relate to them is you know wound up in the way that they are married and are together I think that's really peaceful and lovely and it's really nice to be able to have this place that I just kind of plug into this space that I feel so comfortable in and I don't need to worry about you know interacting in a way that like like, oh, is, is it me being sensitive here and there? Like, yes, sure. Like, yep. I, I am a sensitive person and I want to be sensitive to their feelings. But the point of this equation is not for me to have my own independently romantic relationship with these people. My point, mm. The point of this equation is for me to be a, a part of this family unit. And be family. loved and share the love. So exactly. It's not about me, like, having my own thing with each other. Right. It's yeah. about, like, the thing the that The unit of them. It's a, it's a family. Right. I want to hear from Charlotte now. How did you meet your couple? I actually met the woman in the couple on Tinder. And we chatted on Tinder for a bit, but didn't actually meet up with each other. And then I ran into her at Folsom Wh Street. What, what do they say in their Tinder profile? Well, uh, this is kind of the funny part. Um, nothing. So it's just <laughs> so it's pictures just of her. them. No, just, just, her. just her. Just her. Just her. So I was not aware that she had a husband. Mm. <laughs> so you kind of fell into it more. Yeah. So I, I ended up running into her at um, Folsom Street Fair. 
she's like, oh my God, hi, we matched on Tinder and this is my husband. And it's, I mean, it's San Francisco, it's 2018. That doesn't phase me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, Just another day. <laughs> yeah. so Your like, husband, anything else you want to tell yeah. me? Yeah. But I, I didn't, I did not know that she had a husband, but that was fine. It's whatever. So um, she invited me to come hang out and I still don't think I like fully understood that her husband was like necessarily part of the deal because he hadn't been included in previous <laughs> conversations (laughs) (laughs) so I like I went over kind of with the expectation that it was just gonna be her and her husband was there too I'm like all right well you guys are both attractive so (laughs) this is fine (laughs) but it was a little bit of a surprise interesting Um, so you were uh, you're bisexual yeah you were looking for hot women on tinder yeah and you had no idea she had a husband. And no, now, not really. <laughs> and now the husband's in a situation. Now, how did then you become their unicorn? At the time that I met them, they weren't seeing like people independently. Like they were only seeing people together. Oh. Um, so yeah, they were just kind of like a package deal. Is that the same situation for you, Alice? Do they see people, other people independently? Yeah, they do. Oh, they do. Okay. So yeah. they're in a polyamorous uh, marriage. Then. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Got it. Okay. So back to Charlotte. I want to get... Back to, you say that you've had relationships with them for several years. Yeah. How did that come about? Well, I I guess we just, like, we hit it off. We got along, like, not just, like, sexually, but, you know, as, as people, as friends. I was kind of, like, forced into a place of being very vulnerable with them just because of the time that I met them in my life. So I actually met them just several weeks after being sexually assaulted, and I was not yet in a place where mm. I was being sexual. I, like, I wanted to be, but that's something that I, like, had to be open with them about, which is, like, mm. it, it kind of took it from, like, oh, this is, like, a casual, like, sort of, like, hookup thing to, like, let me tell you about my trauma. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Um, both of you I, kind of, of you, were yeah. in, like, these places that... To yeah. kind of expose my own ignorance about this topic, I always thought that the couple benefited more from a unicorn and what I'm see, what I'm hearing is everybody benefits from this relationship, you know. So you guys were sort of at a place in your life where you needed safety, comfort, love, mm-hmm. and you found people who were who were willing and generous to give you that. So I actually heard that it kind of was this was common. I would love to hear your opinions if this is just coincidence that both of you were in this place or yeah. you know anything more about it. But what at least what I've heard was that it actually benefits the single person just as much as the couple. Because oh. they're in a place that they're looking for that like family. I'd kind of thing. like to address the the language around yeah. like who does it benefit more. Yeah. That, I that, like this. Yeah. That comes across as really transactional. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's and true. Like, yeah. The the point of this equation is not to figure out who who gets the better end of the deal out of this. Like, mm-hmm. can I like uh, add up the numbers and I'm I'm on the winning side? Like, point of a relationship is not to keep score about mm-hmm. who's winning. The point of the relationship yeah. is to give and receive what whatever those needs are that you have met, whatever those dimensions of compatibility that you have across people are, whether that's loyalty or respect or romanticism or sexuality or like any any of those verticals. You have the depth of relationship with people that you do across those Mm -hmm. and you have the needs that you have those don't need to be mirror images totally like Mm -hmm. you you have the needs and the wants that you have and you have the energies that you can give to a thing it's not about who's going to benefit more out of this and i think that's why maybe it says like derogatory term because there is that perception sometimes that one party does benefit and you're basically saying like this is just like any relationship when the timing's right yeah. when right, both people right. are all three people are in that place they're ready to receive each other I, I think a lot of the reason why it maybe refers to it as a derogatory term is when you think about the concept of like oh I'm a single person I think this would be fun to connect with a couple and may, make this happen and like have like sexual and romantic or whatever interactions with both sides of this couple that sounds great on the surface and then mm-hmm. and calling yourself a unicorn is like yeah I can throw this label on it it fits in this neat little box. Yeah. Uh, but the reality of the situation is that, like, leads to finding a lot of predatory behaviors from both directions that, like, if you have somebody that describes themselves as a unicorn hunter, they're probably not the kind of person that you want right. to be that person's quote-unquote right. unicorn Oh, for, yeah, right? that's right? true. Or you know? even yeah. someone that describes themselves. You guys are both people that just found a relationship with a couple. I'm right. like, correct me if I'm wrong, you're not, like, running around saying you're a unicorn. I have never described myself <laughs> exactly. as that. My roommates might have said that about so. me. <laughs> That's probably the key difference. Okay, so I'm approaching this all wrong because I've been wanting to 
explore this world in my transitional phase. And I keep like swiping on couples on Tinder and none of them will swipe back. I think I'm like a little aggressive. I'm just gonna like fall maybe you're into trying a to pretend put too much of a label on you being I a think I am. I'm coming up a little desperate. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it back a notch. Um so let's talk about all the specifics of a, I guess unicorn relationship. You just say a relationship with a couple. A relationship with a couple. Okay. We'll get rid of the unicorn term. So when you go over to their house tonight. What do you think will happen? Um, we will probably get stoned and watch TV and drink some scotch. And I might convince them to go do a whiskey workout with me and then pass out. What's a w- whiskey workout? It's where you drink as much scotch as possible while you lift weights. That sounds wow. absolutely terrible. That's it's amazing. <laughs> At this point, is your relationship mostly platonic or does sex come in? Yeah, I mean, sex comes in here and there. With um, both partners? You're, you're bisexual also. I, I am okay. also bisexual. So both uh, partners. Yeah, I, I feel like one, one of the most romantic moments of our, our relationship and all together was like, while, while she was getting ready, like going down on him to like make sure that he stayed hard so she could come out and, like fuck him immediately after that I'm like oh, you're like the fluffer in that situation <laughs> <laughs> technically the truth technically the truth um. so sexually the three of you guys are involved have you had one on one yeah sexual? okay yeah so, with both of them okay and then what happens I guess in any relationship, how do you schedule your time? Uh, one of my favorite quotes about being polyamorous at all is that all polyamorous relationships are hierarchical. Your primary relationship is with the calendar. <laughs> 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 um, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm kind of their stray cat. I kind of just wander in and out for the most part. Uh, and do they take you out on dates and vice versa? Yeah, I mean, like, we all go out on dates. I wouldn't say that it's like, uh, uh, they're taking me out or vice versa. It's like, yeah, like, let's go grab dinner in this place. That sounds like a lovely time. And what about, like, family events? Do you go to like, family reunions? I, 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 was, I was in their wedding party, so I... Oh, okay. Oh. They're, they're <laughs> part, parts of their family know, know, don't know that they're polyamorous. Everybody getting naked before they got in the hot tub was, like, the parts that didn't know it was like, oh, all right. Like, they're, they're just close friends because there's not really, like... M- much sexual contact happening there. Got it. Um, okay. The uh, orgy that happened later that night was, um, you know, that that was behind closed doors. For so okay. were you, like, seeing them before they were married then? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They only got married a couple months ago. So I, I think that's, like, another myth about... I'm just saying, like, I guess, like, from what like you hear in media, not that this is right or not, another myth that I've heard is, like, typically it ends up... It's a lot of times married couples that are older and take in someone that is younger have you guys experienced that or um yes <laughs> <laughs> was that was your couple much older yeah they are s- pretty significantly older than me oh really how can can you tell us how um much? i'm actually not entirely sure how old she is oh. um but i'm 22 she's 40 okay um so, so like double your age, age yeah. yeah yeah and have they been married for a while yeah Okay. And then did you have sexual relationships with them one-on-one? Well, I originally just started, like, seeing the both of them, like, never separately or anything like that. But then um, a little bit further down the line, I started um, hanging out more one-on-one with the male part of the couple. Oh, yeah. interesting. And was that sort of the evolution of the relationship or was that more that she stepped back? Or he stepped forward, whichever. I think part of it had to do with, like, she started dating people independently. Oh, okay. But, yeah, I would say I'm definitely, like, closer to him. We keep in contact. I talk to him. Mm. Anytime that we all, all three of us hang out together, I'm, like, coordinating through him. Okay, so he was the Google calendar It's interesting. You guys. <laughs> that you I know. I met, I met through her, and then he ended up taking, like, more of the, I don't, I don't know exactly how to say it, but. Initiative? Yeah. 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 So did the three of you guys go out on dates as well? Yeah. And like hung out. What about family yeah. events? Oh my god, no. <laughs> <laughs> and did their friends know about you? About me? Mm-hmm. Oh, I would like sometimes hang out with the, them and their friends. Um, I'm not sure how much their friends knew about like the nature of our relationship, but right. I would like go to a bar like with a bunch of their friends, and we we don't run in the exact same circles, but like they overlap. But people how? could have seen you as just a friend. Yeah. yeah exactly. Really. 
How deep were your feelings for them? Did you feel like you were falling in love? Um, no. I would say that we had, like, a pretty solid foundation of friendship. They definitely care about me. They've been super supportive. It's been, like, an on and off thing for several years. But just due to strange timing, they've, like, come into my life at, like, very weird periods. Like, me going through a breakup. Oh, so when you need them most. Oh, yeah. It's so interesting. Not necessarily when I need them most because there have been a couple times where, like, they come back around and I'm like, I can't do this right now like yeah and Ellis how deep are your feelings for them I don't know I love them a lot I guess it's hard to quantify I I don't think it's really possible for me to compare that to any other partners that I've had or have because each of those relationships are unique like I have the relationships with people that I do it's not in comparison to some other relationship that I have that I'm holding you to the standard of this other person right I don't think that's fair to anybody involved in that equation And is it, and this is just specific to your relationship with them, do you feel like you have stronger feelings for one person over the other? Or do those feelings kind of fluctuate? I would say they'd fluctuate in that like, when I'm hanging out with one over the other, I feel more connected with them Mm. because I'm like interacting with them at that point in time Mm -hmm. but you know again it's not really a comparison that i am making there like i i'm not looking to say like i i'm closer with this person in these measurable ways if i put down my points sheet they've got more points at the end of the day like that that's insane that that's not the way to build a healthy relationship well it sounds like you very much view them as like a unit Mm -hmm. and that's a lot of your interactions where it sounds like charlotte some of yours at least recent has been more with the male counterpart Mm -hmm. do you ever bicker and fight? I have never fought with them. No. I would say, like, we're pretty squarely in friends with benefits territory, though. Okay. Yeah. So. Have you ever witnessed them fight with each other? <laughs> That's a good um, question. <laughs> I, I've been on the, like, hey, I want to check in. Could you give us some alone time? Oh, okay. Which, like, you know, I they, they are tactful people. They're not really interested in having a fight in front of another person. Whether yeah. Whether they're close with them or not. Charlotte, did you ever witness them fight? No. It sounds like a great relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so is this the first time you both have been in a relationship with a couple? Or have there been other instances? Probably, no. Not probably. I have definitely, like, slept and hooked up with people, like, who are in a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, well, yes, easily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but individuals. Individuals, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, wait, no, that's not true. Mm-hmm. I just thought of something. But it was like, it was like me and my boyfriend at the time sort of like dating another couple. Mm. Like, oh. there's like two couples. So never just you never just with me. the couple. Yes, I've, I've done that before. I yeah. had a, a partner of mine at the time was, we, we were emotionally monogamous and also like more or less dating another couple. But, yeah. Uh, like, it it was two couples dating each other. It was not like the four of us dating. Okay, got so it. it was so more it was like, like two, two units. Two units, were, yeah. Right, yeah. right. Because yeah. yeah. you came as a package too. and they came as a package. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Got it. So is this the first time that you've been kind of with just a couple? In a third? relationship. I think so. Oh, wow. Yeah, like I guess, we both aren't yeah, entirely like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like there's a lot of history that I need to read on through right now. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I, I say I think so in that, like, there have been many things. Yeah. And I feel like I, I, I need to think about, like, what I would, how I would want to define a, a bunch of different things. And I, Yeah, like, I what does know. dating mean? <laughs> right. I was going to ask, too, like, what is, like, is this a relationship? Relationship? I know you alluded that it was more like friends with benefits. Like, I guess, mm. how would you describe the type of relationship this is? M- my question would be, what's the commitment level? Yeah. Can you date, or, or, like, are you dating other people, I'm assuming? Yeah, so, yes, I am. Yeah, so it's not you're monogamously dating this couple. Correct, right. It's not like I... I, I was brought on as a third that is now, like, the plaything of this couple, and that's the only only way that it can be. Like, I, I can understand if that's your jam, and that's how, the kind of relationship that you're looking for, and I don't think anybody should be shamed for looking for that kind of relationship. Mm-hmm. And if you're doing that in a healthy way that's perfectly appropriate, uh, that is not the kind of relationship that I'm looking for. So what if, because you're going over there unannounced tonight after this. I am. What right. if you go over there and they have another person that they're playing with there? I don't know, I'll probably ca- crash into the guest bed instead of their room. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, matter of fact. It, it's a relationship in the sense that it's definitely not just physical, like you guys have an emotional connection, 
But just like any other polyamorous relationship, you're not bound to just being monogamous with them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Would you describe okay. yours similar, that you had an emotional, or did you feel like yours was more physical? Um, I definitely think we had like a, a foundation of friendship, for mm-hmm. sure. But there was never any sort of like expectations, for example, that I needed to tell them about my other partners or yeah. anything, anything like that. Like, Is that like just thinking from like not uh, dating a couple, like I've had a friend with benefits for years that like we are friends and I like him at an emotional level that way but I would never call it a relationship mm. or like any like I yeah, think sure. there's a difference of I guess like how deep you're going with someone but it's not like just a play thing either like there's a line there I guess that's modern days that there's so many spectrums. right but it, it, is there a line there or is it a spectrum upon which you find yourself falling I, I find it hard personally to define whether I'm in a relationship or not in a relationship or how important it is to even call that right uh, I have sex with most of my friends that's a really poor denoter for me as to if i'm in a relationship with somebody or not that is not true for most people for most people that's a great denoter for like if they're in a relationship or not i i feel like i'm so basic in this because to me friends are off limits for me when it comes to sexual relationships Mm -hmm. i think if you're my friend, I'm not having sex with you. And if I'm having sex with you, you're not my friend. But what I do find interesting, you're like, I have sex with all my friends. And then if I fall in a relationship with them, I fall in a relationship with them. If I don't, then it's still a friendship there. Yeah, absolutely. So it and takes even then, away... like, what, what, what is that defining line between I'm in a relationship with you versus I'm not? Like, right. I, I don't have a good answer for that for myself. Why are the majority of us who are dating so caught, hung up on definition, defining the relationship? Are we monogamous? Are we um, exclusive? This and that. It puts so much pressure and parameters on friendship even when you're just like free form, like <laughs> whatever, anything goes, goes. And I'm, you're just having your heart drive the situation. Well, I, I would say that that it, that is a like to address the first part of what you just said. Why do we want to have labels or not? Because it makes life less complicated. Mm. Want, wanting to have something as difficult to process as emotion be less complicated is obviously a very attractive thing. I'm as free form as I am right now because that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let, let it, let's not say that this is a solid state of my life that must exist forever more. Right. Like mm-hmm. this is the conclusion that I've reached. At this point in my life with 27 whole years of experience. Right. Mm. Things could change. Yeah. Have you thought about the end to this? I know that sounds really bad, but have you thought about like, how do you break up with a couple? How do you step away from them? Hurting their feelings? Jealousy even? Did any of these words come to mind? I will burn those bridges when I get to them. (laughs) All right. Charlotte, I know like you said that you're in a monogamous relationship now. Yeah. Well, I've known them for like three or four years now. So it hasn't always been in like a time in my life where I'm like available to do that kind of thing. So, I mean, I guess you could say I've, you know, quote, broken up with them like a couple times. Mm -hmm. Just been like, I'm not like in a place where this makes sense for me right now. Or I'm not in a place where like I want this. Or I am in a monogamous relationship. You know, whatever. There's like a gazillion different things that could like get in the way of that. Or I just don't feel like it. That's that's been a thing before. Mm -hmm. So it just fades in and out. Like, yeah, like Uh, I would say similar to any like more casual And I'll say something but like we're we're like we're friends like first and foremost i would say so like just catching up it's like oh yeah i've got a boyfriend now okay cool like, yeah <laughs> it's ha- not it's not really like uh we have to stop seeing each other right. right it's not that dramatic yeah have you ever felt jealousy yeah no not really <laughs> i've always been doing my own thing too like when i met them i had a boyfriend mm-hmm. um for me at least in this type of relationship i don't want to step on any toes they're married they're in love with each other mm. they're not necessarily polyamorous they mm-hmm. have an open relationship they have sex with other people but it's like not my place to get like emotionally involved in their relationship mm. um interesting what about for you alice i feel like you just don't get jealous in general in, in general i I think that everybody feels jealousy from time to time. Whether it's you seeing a picture of your, a bunch of friends of yours out on Facebook the mm. next day after they just had a great time, that you're completely platonic with all of them, there's no romantic or sexual attraction there <laughs> at all, 
and you see that and you didn't get a text from any of them. It's like, You're like, where wow. are you doing the whiskey yeah. workout without me? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Like, I, I'm a human. I experience jealousy. But the the right way to deal with that is to not think like, oh, I'm inadequate. Oh, like, the, the these are these negative emotions. Or like, I'm not supposed to feel this. Let me tamp it down and put it mm-hmm. away. The right way to deal with that is to uh, address it and understand that you're a person that feels these emotions and like think about it and observe it and realize this within yourself and think about why you're feeling this way. And at least these are the techniques that work for me. I, I, like the most monogamous person's life. If you think about uh, the friends that you have, like how often do you compare them to each other to think Never, yeah. how much you like one friend better than the other friend. Like, but people do get jealous if they get left out. Right, right yeah. exactly. Like it, it's the same concept. Yeah. It doesn't mean that that feeling's not a reasonable feeling to have Mm -hmm. it just means that you have to focus on processing it and especially around poly relationships there's a lot of focus on like you shouldn't ever feel jealousy like no like feel jealousy like that's a huge emotion to feel validate your feelings right like just understand why you're feeling that and where the root of that comes from what's been like the most fulfilling part of this relationship it's time to take a quick break so we can tell you about the latest service we have been building over here at dateable We've created a platform to connect you with vetted experts from our network to help with everything from coaching with dating, therapy, dating profile reviews, and even ways to get real feedback about your dating style. The sessions typically run from 30 minutes to an hour and can all be done via Skype or Google Hangouts, so you can be anywhere. Listeners have been sharing how worthwhile their sessions have been with comments about how easy the coaches are to talk to, how they have provided a new perspective, and how they have created actionable ways to inspire change. To meet the coaches and book your session today, visit datablepodcast.com slash coaching. Now back to the show. What's been like the most fulfilling part of this relationship? I don't know. It's just nice to spend time with people that you like, like whether that's one person or two people or... Mm-hmm. whatever so sex is good if you like them like. <laughs> do you prefer it over a one-on-one relationship uh no no why is that i am the type of person where i do like to be like pretty like emotionally committed and involved with somebody and polyamory can get dicey i've seen relationships fail in like a polyamorous situation because of a lack of boundaries uh Um, in terms of your emotions. So I do feel like a relationship with a couple is not the place for me to like fall in love and be emotionally fulfilled. Do you think it's that you just can't go that deep because everyone has like five other people? Based on my own personal experiences, like being in a polyamorous relationship, the downfall of that relationship was falling in love with somebody else. Mm. Sleeping with somebody is fine. Falling in love with somebody destroyed it. I am a little bit emotionally cautious Mm, and there's still hurt involved yeah i'm not trying to break up a marriage yeah (laughs) yeah and and, like i'm the type of person where i like i do like i want like a deep emotional connection with somebody Mm -hmm. i tend i know it probably doesn't sound like it based on what i'm saying but like i do think i have monogamous tendencies that's something that i want you're saying on tinder (laughs) you're swiping right on every couple when I was on Tinder, I was doing the exact opposite. I'm like, oh, that's a couple. Never mind. Like, they're cute, but, like, that's not what I'm looking right. for. Right. Yours just yeah. kind of happened. Yeah, yeah, mine just kind of happened. But well, you didn't even know. I didn't even know. <laughs> it was a know. bait and switch. <laughs> <laughs> it, it ended or a gift, okay, with pa- like, gift with purchase. Let's, let's call it that. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I do find this so interesting because it works only if the couple has a very strong foundation. Yeah. And they're they've already communicated what it means to bring a third into the relationship. I remember in college, my friend was, uh, she was married already in college and he, he had brought in a third, a female into the relationship and this woman moved in with them and she was fine with it. And the three of them had a relationship and eventually it ruined their marriage because her husband ended up spending more time with this girl and then he wanted to have kids only with her and not with my friend his his wife and those were the things that they didn't talk about because they didn't even think about it at the, at the time yeah. so they ended up getting a divorce and he went off with the, the woman like in any relationship you have to communicate what are the consequences what are yeah. the things we need to be watching out for and also how do we support each other through this yeah i think e- even beyond communicating things that you might not know you you might not know how you're going to want to react to a situation you might think that you're going to react some way and yep. then the, 
it's completely different and you communicate to them that like yeah the, this thing that you want to do is totally cool and mm-hmm. then you're a halfway into that and it's like oh shit like i i can't deal with that i thought that i could and i was right. wrong you can revoke consent at any time mm. don't feel like you need to like have this untenable relationship because you said that this is something that you were right. okay with from the get-go. Like, if it sucks, like, say, like, oh, shit, like, I- I'm sorry, I thought this was going to be okay, and yeah. it wasn't. Yeah, and, like, like, any relationship, I mean, it's not yeah. working Right, or maybe you. you're, like, yeah. strapped to a cross and three lashes deep, and you realize that was a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> no, stop! Safe word, safe word. Right, right. Uh, Alice, or- I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Charlotte, though. Do you prefer a relationship with a couple versus a relationship uh, one-on-one? I I don't think you can make that comparison reasonably. I think I like the relationships with the people that I have relationships with. And whether that's a couple or one-on-one or more than that is the relationships that I have with those people in those specific contexts. Mm-hmm. And saying one-on-one versus a couple versus literally anything else, uh, to try to define that as A against B is an over- oversimplification of the situation. Yeah, I feel like Ellis just wants to slap me every time I ask these questions. She's like, you're so <laughs> heteronormative. I think with yours, Shut up. <laughs> I think yours is like more true poly every point of view where you're saying that you probably are more mon- or yeah, monogamous. I, I, yeah, you really monogamish. know yourself. Monogamish. 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 <laughs> yeah, I guess like the other th- side, what was like fulfilling to them in this relationship? I'm young and cute what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> you're like obvious so <laughs> that's <laughs> serial <laughs> i was being a little um like tongue-in-cheek there um <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean obviously yeah duh, but, yeah, duh. Cute, but um you know i just think it's like i said earlier it's it's nice to spend time around people that you enjoy like yeah, yeah. That's pretty mm-hmm. much it. And I mean, I'm sure it varies, yeah. right? Like, I'm sure there's some couples that are using it to escape a bad marriage. And then there's other couples that are probably just using it as, like, an addition and something fun and interesting. Enhancement. There's every possible variant right. of what you're looking for. Uh, like there. any relationship. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the terms. Because I know oh, unicorn Lord. is a loaded term. I'll reread the first sentence. A unicorn is a bisexual person, usually, though not always female, who is willing to join an existing couple, often with the presumption that this person will date and become sexually involved with both members of that couple and not demand anything or do anything which might cause problems or inconvenience. That is a very narrow definition (laughs) of uh, a term that is... uh, um... I don't know. I mean, I, I've heard the term unicorn used more tongue in cheek than I have, like, as an actual term to right, describe true. somebody. Like, it's more joking in the, like, um, 70s, 80s swinger, like, terrible porno that you just watched. Right. You know? yeah. um, a, to begin with, like, that's a super heteronormative statement. Like, I absolutely think <laughs> that you, you hate I didn't write it, but it sounds this like urban dictionary. <laughs> Top definition on urban I, I think there, there, if you were to uh, to begin the dissection of one piece of that statement, say, like, I, why, why would it need to be a bisexual, usually woman, joining a heterosexual relationship? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. sure, there's, uh, you know, different terms that you can try and pick out for... Uh, gay or lesbian or otherwise relationships that a third person might try and join. Mm -hmm. But I I think realistically what what you're trying to do is find this label for this person that wants to exist with other people. The way in which you want to do that, like clearly between Charlotte and I, there's a very significant difference in the way to which we've understood this. Which is great. Yeah. Right. Right. Like we, we haven't treated this same thing in the same way, even though you could, Theoretically, try and slap the label of a unicorn on both of us. It's just, you know, this is not a one-size-fits-all thing. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, like, using the term unicorn, uh, to to me, is much more associated with, you know, looking for a unicorn hunter that is this couple (laughs) that's looking for this idyllic, I watched too many threesomes in porn uh, uh, relationship that, like... Is looking for a cute young girl to join a straight couple. Like well, that's yeah. a stereotype. Right, that that is yeah. a stereotype. So like I don't living know. stereotype <laughs> here, Charlotte. Stere- <laughs> stereotypes suck. Like let's not try and come up with ways to continue to rehash them more deeply. Any other thoughts about the the definition? I mean, I've never 
I've never been like, oh yeah, I'm a unicorn. That is not something that I like, identify with necessarily. I'm just a person. Um, I I always thought that people called them unicorns because like it's so rare to find like a young, typically a young cute girl who is into both members of like an older yeah. married couple. Mm, yeah. Um, I think that is a definition as well, for so sure. So that's, yeah. where, that's where I thought that term came from. I've definitely seen more unicorn hunters than unicorns. Like people yeah, looking. Like, absolutely. Yeah. I, can, we just stop? More. can we just pause and like <laughs> just, just visualize what a unicorn hunter looks like? I just picture, I just picture oh, someone. Oh, I know what a unicorn is. <laughs> like, like a rainbow camouflage outfit. <laughs> <laughs> With a bow and arrow with a rainbow at the end. I mean, it, <laughs> that is so the illustration of this episode. <laughs> is uh, is the not is not the term hunter in and of itself yeah. definitionally predatory? Oh, it totally so is. When you, that's what it feels like. A lot of the times, like, that's, like, a big reason why whenever I see that going on on Tinder, I'm like, no thanks. Like, I don't want to, yeah. like, I don't want to be part of yeah. whatever weird dynamic y'all have going on where yeah. you're, like, looking for, like, a young cute girl on Tinder. Like, that's true. I really right. don't want anything yeah. to do with that. Like, that. So I, both of you, at least what I'm gathering, you are like are all for having a, like a relationship with a couple as long as it's organic as long as it's like you being an equal party in the sense yeah. it's it's yes. when it becomes like this weird like we're trying to like find this person yeah to just exactly that's our... what makes it like strange and yeah. puts like weird pressure on it and like all these expectations that you are looking for somebody to like fulfill that stereotype and do lord knows what in your boring marriage like that's, <laughs> that's not my job like i don't want to be your spice like well yeah i think yeah. The, the, the fact that this definition says like you're not gonna have your own like needs yeah like, you're just right. at the like mercy of this right. couple. you are it's the like, pet yeah let well, I me mean, back to what you were saying about like who it benefits more this definition definitely makes it benefit a party yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Re- I mean, it- didn't didn't Voldemort have to drink unicorn blood to stay alive? Isn't that? How that <laughs> I feel like it God, really- there's so many things with unicorns. <laughs> there's so many things. going. I feel like that definition and like the common stereotype sort of like removes uh, like agency and autonomy from you know the the third person. Of in course, the yeah. yeah. It's like you were trapped. <laughs> right. Yeah. We caught one. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Unicorn. Well, this other. Th- this is something else I've heard is like, and again, you guys are probably just going to be like, this is su- such bogus, but this is something that's floating out on the internet that there is basically the single person that's joining the couple is at some sort of like low in their life or just frustrated with being single. There's often that they're mm-hmm. not ready to be in a relationship. This is maybe more of a monogamous point of view, like someone that's not polyamorous to begin with. Yeah. And they go to the couple to get, like, comfort and learn how to be in a relationship. And then they essentially get to a point where the couple also was benefiting from this and now no longer is. And the single person has gotten enough kind of confidence to flourish on their own. And they, like, set them free and the single person finds someone. Is this a thing? Is this a terrible movie? You're gone. (laughs) There's many movies. (laughs) made about it oh man I mean, <laughs> alice's face no one can see his face as this was going down but you're like this is a bad lifetime movie it really sounds like it i don't think i've heard of that i don't think i have ever heard of that happening ever i, yeah. I mean that if sounds you go yeah. and google it that's do, like the first storyline like, that comes a lot out. of storylines oh, wow. yeah, yeah i've heard. never heard of that either but and it doesn't like reflect with my experience either also i had a boyfriend when i met this couple so it's not like i was like a single desperate uh, des- yeah yeah. This is what the media does, though. They kind of want to, they want to one normalize, but also explain why these sort of configurations of relationships happen to the mass public yeah. who've never been exposed to it. So they had to give a reason for why a couple would want to take on a third. You know, it kind of makes sense that they have to develop these storylines. They can't just be like, oh, they just all fell in love and all start hanging out together. Yeah. Because whoever's watching the movie would be like, 
that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't happen in real life. I don't know. It, just feels, it feels like the way that it actually happened feels so much more normal than that. Like, yeah, 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 like, yeah, I feel like... I have yeah. a deep-seated need. Let me go find a couple. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, who does that? That's I'm so lonely. I must find a couple that will nourish me through this lonely time and teach me how to be in a relationship and then release me into the my own natural habitat. See, that's Some writer in, like, Minnesota sense. that wrote for this. That doesn't make any sense, but... Finding people that you like spending time with and spending time with them, that makes sense. Yes. That's not an interesting yes. lifetime movie. Though. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody wants to watch that. Charlotte, we're never going to sell the room movie rights to this. Yeah, no, <laughs> nope, not going to get greenlit for that. But this is, I love this having this conversation because, again, even if you are not in a situation like this or dating a couple, you can still learn from this because it just shows you there's so many different configurations and yep. variations of a relationship and you can't just be like oh well a, f a unicorn is this that's like saying a single person is this right you just can't put anybody in a category right Lonely and desperate, yeah. <laughs> with, with nine cats <laughs> that's not 99.9% .9 of single no, looking for a couple no, no, no. <laughs> so what are some of our other takeaways then I think one is um, it's great to hear extreme situations to understand your own situation. So not one size fits all, like any relationship. And you can't, I'm learning like, you can't use other people's experiences to dictate what you're going to go through. It's not like, oh, tell me about your unicorn situation because it's gonna apply to my relationship with this couple. It's not, every relationship is so different. So we can't think about it that way. And then I, I feel like with all of these different configurations of relationships, they're still about other human beings. So instead of treating them as a vessel, we're still having relationships with other humans, which means feelings are involved. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of other dynamics involved and we have to just be sensitive to that and remove the rules for what you see that. I mean, you were just saying like, I have sex with all my friends. That's why I like them because I have sex with them and they're my friends. Well, you have duh. sex with them because you like them. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Like I have them. sex with them because I like them. I don't like them because I have sex with them. Yeah. Right. yeah. And it's not so black and white. Like, for me, I can't have sex with my friends. Well, no. Damn it. I'm going to have sex with all my friends now. I can do it to it. <laughs> I can do it too. I can do it too. But it just shows that we have... The reason why sometimes we get so fatigued by dating is because we place all these rules um, we confine ourselves to, well, if this happens, then this can't happen. Or mm -hmm. if if I don't experience this, and the, then this can't happen. It's not a domino effect because what you're going through is so unique to who you are and who you are right now. So stop like putting these boundaries on what, what you should be feeling. Yeah. I think mine takeaway kind of falls into your aspect that everyone's story is different. And again, to these like, awful definitions that encompass everything. Um, I think like, especially if it's, I love having you guys on because you're able to like share your story and we just don't just point to urban dictionary and say, <laughs> this is what it is. And I think it's important because it, it's not just with dating couples. Like we've had this happen. We had a guest that sh I talked about dating with Tourette and she was mm -hmm. like, it is not how every media portrayal makes it seem. Yeah. And there's so many aspects like this that range in all shapes and forms. And I think, yes, like, I'm not saying that we can't pay attention to media and entertainment, but don't, like, use that as, like, the only, like, truth, like, in anything. Yeah. How about we give some advice for people who are entering into a situation like this? So let's go from the single person's side, entering into a relationship with a couple. What advice would you give them? Adopt a cat. <laughs> what <laughs> um i would say just like communicate like your needs and your feelings and be conscious of others needs and feelings jeez it's this exact same advice i would give for any other anything right, yeah. right yeah i yeah i le less glibly uh not just adopting a cat uh, try try and be honest and genuine with people yeah. and i mean i think the only thing that you can really ask of 
anybody ever is to try to be their most genuine self to you and to try to have you be your most genuine self to them. Try try and be that. And that being said too, like nobody succeeds at anything ever 100% of the time. Like mm. you're you're not going to be perfect. You you're, you're going to fuck up. Everybody's going to fuck up. It's the nature of being that that happens. And you have to be able to let yourself off the hook as long as you treat it as a learning experience that it should. And what about as a couple who is starting to develop feelings for someone. Not that any of us are have this experience, but I think from this definition again, if you're a couple, treat someone like a human, yeah. not right, a right. play object. Yeah, I think certainly. that's like... If, if you're going to go from the urban dictionary <laughs> definition that we <laughs> exactly. just read. Exactly. And I think like what Charlotte, you mentioned, like this is a relationship like any other. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of stuff you said about someone like cycling in and out of your life over years and it's not really like this drastic breakup. Like I can relate that to my own situation with one person, just because mm-hmm. yours with a couple is not really that different. It's just mm-hmm. the circumstance is different. Yeah. That's the thing is that it, all of this has felt like very like organic and natural and normal. Like They weren't a unicorn hunter. No. <laughs> <laughs> but as a couple. I mean, maybe. <laughs> they tried to. <laughs> they trapped you real well. <laughs> but I mean, also as a couple, first you really have to communicate with your partner before taking on a third person into your lives because you have to make sure that you're both on the same page and also establish some boundaries, right? You got to And why you're doing it. And why that. you're doing Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Anything else that we can offer up to people who are curious about this topic, want to learn more? I don't know. Just get off Tinder. Get off Tinder. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Where can they oh, go? Oh. No, I'm not really kidding. <laughs> Where can Okay, Your local bar is somewhere where there's other human beings. <laughs> what's, a, what's, um, what's the opposite of a unicorn hunter? A couple hunter? I don't think that's a thing either. Uh, are any of these mean? things actually things in life? <laughs> I really, I don't I mean, know. I don't know if I've ever talked to anybody who was like, yeah, I really want to date a couple. Like, I do. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm a couple no. hunter. No. We actually had someone that listened to this podcast that was inspired to date a couple. I think just like after oh, yeah. hearing um, the polyamorous like Ben and Kate's episode. Oh, yeah. And she did like seek out couples after. Mm-hmm. And then that she actually. She was successful at dating a couple. I don't know if, I don't know if success. She went on a few dates with a couple. <laughs> <laughs> she found a couple. She found a couple. She found one, but I guess like maybe like I like this whole like organic thing, and it's like if you're the couple that's on Tinder trying to like be so forceful with it, like yeah, that, it could work for the right person, but it also could not work too. Yeah, that's true. Well, I love it. I love it. I think I love that we found two unicorns and who are not actually <laughs> unicorns <laughs> by definition. Unicorn, the, two humans. Two wait, wait, except for Ellis. Sorry, you're a cat. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the other definition of a unicorn is one of a kind. Does, and you are. Yeah, that's what you I like are. to hear. You're snowflakes. Oh. Stuff like unicorns. All right. <laughs> we all are. We all are. We're going a bit deep down the, the unicorn hole. Now. <laughs> While we discuss unicorn holes I even more, I have something to say about his unicorn hole. <laughs> <laughs> How deep is your hole? There's uh, <laughs> some videos you can see on the internet. I'll let you Google them later. <laughs> should we should we add a new um, urban dictionary term? Unicorn hole. Is unicorn it, hole. I, that's got to be on there. Come on. <laughs> if not, we need to start that. Oh, and it's happening. Start a hashtag. Unicorn right hole. Now. <laughs> I love it. Are we drunk or high? <laughs> What's going on? Neither question mark. I, know. Yeah. I think we whiskey working out. Uh, yeah, maybe possibly. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up. This is <laughs> for listeners. If if you want to add to this discussion, are you a unicorn hunter? We're saying that, that you know, maybe you do exist. Or out there. do you find that term very offensive? Or do if you, you are a couple? <laughs> we'd like to hear from you. Or you like to date Ellis? <laughs> you can always contact us. Charlotte is off the market right now, but we love connecting people. Reach out to us, and we love having uh, people on the show who are here to enlighten us on on different configurations of relationships and love and uh, human connections. So. With that said, we're going to wrap this up. Stay stable! Your action item for this week is to think of a type of a relationship that feels foreign to you. And then go seek out a story from someone who is in this type of relationship. And instead of approaching it in a way of, oh, I want to see how shocking this could be, approach it in a way of, what can I learn from this type of relationship? This episode of Dateable is brought to you by 500 Brunches. 
500 Brunches connects like-minded people with similar interests to meet in real life over brunch. You answer a quick questionnaire about your interests and how you spend your time, and then they'll match you in small groups of six to eight at a brunch spot in San Francisco. Get a free entry into a brunch now by signing up at 500brunches.com and using the code DATEABLE. If you didn't know already, we have a revamped website with articles, videos, and content all about modern dating. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We've had some great feedback about how actionable these episodes are. So check them out on our website or iTunes Music. Also, visit the site today to see the latest about coaching, where we connect you with dateable approved experts to help with everything from dating profile reviews, coaching, and even gathering real feedback about your dating style in a personalized and affordable way. To connect with us, visit datablepodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all under Datable Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and auto-download the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast player so you never miss an episode. 